Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is David Gross with Condi Systems, and I'm honored to again be with my friend Jimmy Lamb from Sawgrass to share with you, hopefully, some, some information that will help you grow your business um, and, and help you um, find new profitable clients. And so, Jimmy, how are you doing today? Well, I'm doing great, David, and as always, I'm honored to be here. It's always uh, a good time to, to spend some time with you because I learn a lot from you as we go through these sessions. So uh, they're as beneficial for me, I believe, as, as those attending with us. Um, so, you know, one of, the, one of my points today that I want to get across to everyone is that when it comes to promoting your business, you don't have to spend a lot of money. There's a lot of really unique things just sitting there waiting for you to do that costs very little money for you to do, and then hopefully can get your name out in front of a lot of people. And that's that's the name of the game for growing your business is, is getting your name out there. So we're going to look at a variety of things today. And I know David has a special offer for you too, uh, having to do with some products that can help you promote your business. Well, Jimmy, you're you're right about the. Um, I think it's it's there's a lot of great ways, and we're going to talk about a few. Bottom line is that you and I and and our clients out there really in an exciting field because um, you know we're, we're in the field of sort of instant gratification we can we can take someone's image or their artwork or whatever and in a very short order put it on something that has a lot of value and uh, for instance I'm living and breathing now with um, our new product that will hopefully start shipping tomorrow and that is our iPhone covers and I've had my cover now for quite a long time and product is great and um, you know people go where can I go get that product it looks so good and so you know where else but um, in the digital you know, area that we we, uh, we live and breathe in to have all these tools at our disposal to make make this th these neat things the photo gifts and and you know if we don't get out there and tell people um, about what products we can make and show them what we can do then uh, they're not going to knock on our door, are they, Jimmy? No, they're not. And you know, David, interesting that you brought the iPhone covers up because I just think that's that's one awesome product that's going to be the big hot seller uh, here coming up. But you know what? Every business owner out there, every sublimator, should go ahead and get one of those and put their logo on it um, to create their first sample, and then they have it with them everywhere they go. So when they're using that phone, people are seeing their logo. You know, if you lay that phone down, people yeah. are going to say, hey, where did you get that? And it's like, hey, and I take one that. more minute, but I heard on the news that the October retail sales were up by half a percent. And right after that report, the the commentator on the radio said that um, uh, that's the good news. The bad news is that half a percent came down to the iPhone 4S introduction. That Apple sold more iPhones in that day or week than in their history, and wow. it accounted for just just. Uh, you know, I don't know if it was close to a billion dollars, but just a tremendous amount. And let me tell you, everybody that's buying an iPhone, they're probably it's it is a status symbol. And um, you know what they're doing with that iPhone is obviously taking pictures. They're they're using it as a camera because it has a fantastic camera. And um, I think everybody that would probably want a nice iPhone uh, photo cover. So I call that sort of reciprocity where you're, the device that you're using to take your pictures, you also want a picture on it. <laughs> That's how a good point. how uh, strange is that in the uh, year 2011? Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so we're going to go through and we're going we're gonna to talk about at least 10 things. I guarantee you when you walk away, there will be a lot more than 10 things. But as I go through, when I, when I put this together, uh, you're going to see that, that my introduction slide, I was trying to figure out the right terminology, never really came up with it. So I'm just calling everything a thing, you know, like thing one, okay? Um, and uh, that's just kind of the way I guess I think sometimes. Um, and no, this isn't Dr. Seuss with thing one, two, and three, because we got thing one through ten. But really, I mean, when you, you start looking at it, especially if you're a new business, one of the most important things you can do is to create a memorable name and logo. And what I mean by that is that people remember who you are, okay, uh, more than anything else. And it's hard to say what's a, a great name, but the way I define it is that people remember it. And, and one on here on the screen, it's really for an embroidery company, but I use it as an example because I came across this company 20 years ago. 
And that name has stuck in my head. I've never met the people. I don't know anything about them. But I saw that name, Wicked Stitch of the West, and it stuck in my head, okay, for 20-some years. So the point being of that name is, at the end of the day, do people remember your name or not? And that's an important thing for you to be able to do is create a name that works, okay? Now, Dave and I were kind of joking beforehand because, you know, we were like, you know, what does Sawgrass mean? <laughs> you know, Sawgrass Technologies, and it's like it really didn't tell you what we do at all, you know. So, of course, I didn't choose that name. But I'm one of these people that I like when your name can at least give people an idea of what it is you do or what you're all about, okay? Yeah, we both missed out on the, um, the, the this slide when we introduced our companies. Um, we, we were founded in 92, and I think Sawgrass was maybe a little bit before that. I can't remember. Right. So, you know, I want to use a couple of examples real quick and just run through some of the things out there. Now, you know, I always want to make sure everybody understands that if you see a name that might be your business name, I did not choose this to pick on you. These are names... I've come across and I've tried to slightly change the name because I don't want to step on anybody's toes. I'm not here to offend anybody. But i got a couple of test questions. You see this name up here on the screen, Hillside Incorporated. What do they do? What, what, what could you say about that company from that name? How would you know that they were a promotional products company? And that's how I saw them build, them, build themselves. I mean, Hillside, that could be a real estate development company. That could be a cemetery. I mean, who knows? But it's actually a promotional products company, but it does it even stand out to you. You know what? By the time this webinar is over, you forgot that name. Trust me. Okay. Another one as an example, and uh, Jane's Things. What the heck is Jane's Things all about? What do you think they do? Well, happen to be a retail gift shop that specializes in personalized products, typically aimed towards a female clientele. Okay, now it kind of makes sense once I tell you what they do, you know. So that's one of those things where the name's pretty good for what they do, and you might actually remember that one, okay? But up front, if somebody looked at it in the yellow pages, they probably wouldn't know what they were looking at. Lucy's Designs. Well, they provide embroidery and monogramming, but how would you ever know that? You know, Lucy's Designs could be interior decorating. It could be apparel. Um, there's a lot of different things it could be. The name really doesn't say, and that's a good example where probably Lucy should include a little tagline. It says Lucy's designs, you know, high quality embroidery and monogramming or unique, you know, apparel or something like that so people have a better idea of what she's all about. You know, keep, keep these things in mind when you start looking at your name, okay, because your name may actually mean something to you, but it means nothing to anybody else. They don't get it. You know, logos, etc. Wow, that could be an ad specialty company. That could be a graphic design company. Um, it could be a lot of different things. It, again, what does that name do for you and will people remember it? You know, quick advertising and promotions. Hmm. Well, they do digitally decorate promotional products and apparel, but you know what? When you hear advertising, you might think that this is an ad agency. So, again, the, the terminology doesn't always work. And that's where I want you to sit down and, and kind of think things through a little bit. Um, this one here, though, is probably one of the coolest names I've come across. I had no idea what they did, but I like to share it. They do martial arts supplies, clothing, and decoration. Now, once you know what they do, that's kind of cool because you're using digital decoration to create products aimed at that marketplace. But really... You know, that could be a video game. <laughs> That's what I think about when I see it. So what does your name say about you? Okay. Um, so think about that. Same thing with a logo. We're in the business of logos. And for us to go out and tell people how important it is to pay you money to put their logo on something and then you don't have a logo. I mean, look down at the bottom. Condi's got a logo. Sawgrass has a logo. And, you know, a lot of times I realize that you're not an artist. I'm not. Okay. I can't draw a logo. I have to pay somebody else to do that, but I can reproduce the logo. But if you look at some of the most famous logos out there, most of them are pretty darn simple. And the idea is that you can start branding yourself um, where people start to recognize your logo as well as your name so that it becomes another way for you to promote yourself because now in your products you can tuck in your little logo, maybe in the backside or a corner or do that with your advertising, your business card, over and over again so that people – see and remember who you are. 
Okay, thing number two on my great list of ten, be a walking billboard. And, you know, that apparel is one of the things that we sell, but it's not the only thing that we sell. And, you know, you want to keep that in mind. Anytime you're in front of people, you want to be able to instantly tell people what you do. You know, a great example of a walking billboard becomes an iPhone cover, for example, or maybe just a T-shirt. You know, it doesn't have to be business apparel. So when I'm talking about a walking billboard, you don't have to necessarily wear it. But you want an example because let me tell you something. Anybody can be your customer tomorrow. If you're in the checkout line at the grocery store and you strike up a conversation, you don't know what that person at the register, you don't know anything about them. That person could be head of a local sports league or the PTA or something else. And you want to be able to instantly show them examples of what you do. And you're probably not walking around with photo panels okay, or coasters or mugs. But if you got that iPhone cover that David's talking about, you can immediately say, hey, listen, this is what we're in the business of doing. And you can show them that cover. You know, if you're wearing a shirt like this that's really cool with a lot of color and everything, that might be where somebody says, hey, I like your shirt. Where did you get it? And you say, hey, you know what? I do that. You know, and that's what we're talking about here. Yeah, just to throw in, Jimmy, that um, when I when you sent over some months ago to review your presentation, the first thing I thought of being a walking billboard was to remind everyone that every product that leaves their shop needs to have some way for another client or referral or somebody to find them and come back and order more. And so make sure even on your shirts you can sublimate on, say, the, the, uh, the, the tag area or the bottom of it, the tail area, the reorder information, your company name, your, your website, who to call for reorder, and that goes for every product, like a mug, put the mates yep. uh, oval labels on the back. So let every product that you sell be, be that billboard, be that Absolutely. be the path to your door, um, because that kind of business is the best kind of business because they already know the kind of quality products that you produce. Right. And, you know, the other neat thing about that is if, if you're doing, let's say, some promotional products like the coffee mugs, and you're giving them to or selling them to a client who is giving them out to their customers, that means that your branding is being carried on to a whole other layer of people who may themselves have a need for the same type of products, and now they have a way to kind of to come back and find you. Absolutely. Okay, thing number three, one of my favorite sales tools that I can't emphasize just how important this is and how easy this is. And that's why I say present a client with his logo. And of course, I don't mean on a piece of paper. I mean on an actual product. You know, if I'm going to walk in and try to convince the Rivers Touch group to buy something, I want to take a sample in that, number one, shows them the quality of what I can produce for them. And number two, is really exciting for them, something that catches their eye. If I, if I go in with anybody else's logo that's not the same, as if I actually put their logo on there uh, and then present it to them as a free gift. Okay, I mean, it's an it's a instant icebreaker when you walk in to talk to a total stranger to be able to say, hey, how you doing? Jimmy Lamb, glad to meet you. Here, first of all, I want to give you a free sample of one of the products that we can create for you so you can see an example of the quality of work that we do. And you gave them that. Their attention is now focused on that product. They're excited because it's their logo and it's a free gift, and it's a great way to open up that sales dialogue and, and then move deeper into it really quick. As I say, a picture is really worth a thousand words, and then hundreds of dollars if you do it right. And, and you're 100% you're right, Jimmy. What I, what I tell people is that um, they need to devote a little bit of their time every week to, to preparing samples that are customized for prospects and they need to be, be sending those out with a little handwritten letter. Uh, handwritten is, is good if you can. And, and just saying that, that you know, the, what's the purpose of the sample, what, what, um, that they can produce a wide variety of products with their logos, and that they'll be calling on them um, in a few days to you know, get their opinion. And I guarantee you they'll keep that sample with their logo, with, with their information forever. And so it's, it's a great way. I, I, um, get, you know, I don't get as many sales calls as I used to, people calling up. I think to some extent people are now afraid 
of making the the old-fashioned sales call right and I pretty much welcome people in I'll, I'll let them in and because I'm interested in their pitch I'm interested in what they're saying how they do it and I'll learn from them but the bottom line is is a great door opener folks out there is to to provide a customized product it could be a coaster it could be a mug uh, maybe something appropriate for their business with their logo on it, and and that will be your door opener to introduce you to that that client, make those connections, and um, and there's bound to be something that you can help them with because you're different from promotional products people. You're you're completely different. You're digital. You're on demand. No no minimum quantity. Um, no setup other than than the artwork, and and maybe you've already done part of that. So it, it's just a um, a great way to to grow your business, and probably I think it's it's the, the number one way um, to build build that that uh, business to business kind of thing. And my everybody knows my number one favorite product in the business to business is the name badge. I think the the name badge is just a great product it's quite profitable and uh, if you watch our, our YouTube videos I've got one up now where I show the the name badge that I did for our church and it's a work of art and it wasn't hard to do but you could take that and in any of that that particular denomination and I gotta believe you've got a sale yep yeah you just I just can't say enough for the this is just one of the easiest things and you know it's it's costing you a little bit of time and and um, you know, a substrate, but you know the returns. You, you get a you get a good ROI on this type of thing. You may not get every client, but you get enough clients that over time that it definitely pays for itself. Discipline. If you just have some discipline, th this will grow your business. Yes. Okay. Uh, thing number four: displaying your work. And you know, sometimes I've. It's kind of like David said. He kind of likes to have people come in and and see their pitch and their angle. And, you know, I'll watch people of how they do things. And as simple as this sounds, a lot of people don't have a portfolio of their work. They're, they're going in and they're talking to a client from the perspective of we can do this and we can do that. But, you know, not only do they not have the sample made for that client that we were just talking about, that they really have very little to show of what they can do. Or on the other hand, they have the worst mismatch of things to show people. I've had people show samples that are, you know, chipped, scratched, um, just kind of thrown together, miscellaneous, and you know, it. you want to give people a professional um, uh, opinion, okay, or you want them to have a professional opinion of you. And if this is a client that's a cold call, who they don't really know you, they're going to start making assumptions about you in the first 30 seconds. <laughs> you walk through the door. So there's got to be a way to show them what you can do. And, and realization is you can't, I mean, if you've ever seen the sample bags I take to do a seminar to show, I mean, that's a whole other piece of luggage, okay? And a lot of times we, we don't necessarily want to drag that in everywhere, though we should have that readily available if we need it. But, you know, there are some simple ways to really just go in and, and show, um, you know, what you're doing. I mean, at, at the bottom end, being able to just do a nice photo album of very good photography of some really unique projects that you've done because at least you can carry that on your hand. And of course that's sort of old school. I mean I like a little bit more modernization. You know, you're going in there with your uh, tablet or maybe even a laptop where again you can show people slideshows of what you've done. Now nothing nothing is a substitute for having good quality samples that you can show, but maybe in that first meeting you have four or five really good quality samples that are really focused on that client, but yet you have this electronic portfolio to be able to show them some of the other projects that you've done. And uh, you just you really got to be able to show people what you can do and what you have done. Got you. What, what I recommend, Jimmy, is if you do have a um, storefront that you go to Walmart and you can pick up a Vizio flat screen TV um, for $200. Yep. Um, and it has a USB port. You put a flash drive in there, and what you're doing is you're taking pictures of your designs, putting them on the flash drive, and the Vizio will just play them in a loop. And I think that complements your, your storefront by having your samples, of course, on display. But 
think of a mug and think of all the themes that you can have with a mug. Well, you, you really don't have that much room on your, your counter, for instance. Right. But what you can do is take pictures of the client's mugs that you've done in the past, have them on there, and I think that's just an incredible wake-up call for people to see what you're doing. You're, you're, it's a name dropper, and if you're taking good photographs, which you should be able to, you're going to just have um, a mesmerizing uh, kind of effect on your clients. You're going to, and more importantly, you're going to plant those seeds, maybe not for a purchase that day, but certainly for a purchase in the future. Right. And, you know, the other thing, too, is when you're taking pictures of the work for the different clients you've done, you're also kind of um, branding yourself based on their logos. I mean, for example, let's say you did some work for, um, I don't know, Burger King, okay, exciting as Burger King is, or, you know, some, some of these bigger name companies. Now, I, I normally, before I add somebody to my portfolio, I do ask them if it's okay if I show something I did for them. And nine times out of ten, they're all for it because it gives them some extra advertising. But the, the point being is when, when you actually have some really good clients out there and you're showing prospective clients, and listen, I'm going to work for these guys, then they tend to have a little higher opinion of you, a little bit more respect for you because they feel like you must be doing something right if you're doing work for those particular companies. So, you know, another good point about being able to show the work you've done. I think also you can you can easily, if you do have a showroom, easily add just a few more things to a point of purchase. For instance, um, I recommend our, our Condi Partner format that just basically has your business name with an array of, of photo gift products. You could make yourself a counter mat um, if that was appropriate, showing all the neat stuff. There's just so many ways that if you do have that retail space that you can you can welcome the, the folks and, and warm them up to what you're capable of and, and plant those seeds. So um, just, just some awesome ideas. Yep. Okay, thing number five, provide free gifts with an order. And this is kind of working on that same sampling thing, but I've learned a long time ago that if somebody orders something, what I like to do is take that same logo and put it on something else that I think would be useful for that client and then put it in with, um, with whatever it is that they ordered as a freebie and as a thank you gift for that order. For example, if somebody was to order that shirt there in the background, you know, look at all these other products I could put in there. I could put in a mug. I could put in the, um, the koozie. I could put in, well, anything. So I try to target something that would be of interest to that client, decorate it with the same logo, put it in there along with a little note that says, thank you for your order, and here's something else you could be interested in. So it absolutely helps. Um, I, I, did you stop, Jimmy? I, yeah, I, I had something. I had to cough anyway. So you go right ahead. I'm, I'm drinking some okay. water here, trying to clear my throat. I, I couldn't couldn't tell. The the um, I think it's just a matter of of learning just a little bit about the client and what product and figuring out okay, what's an appropriate uh, sample. But essentially, every time you greet a client uh, or prospect, you want to show them something new. Um, so that because we're in the digital world, we're on demand, we're have it now, have it my way kind of theme, and whether it's a school, whether it's a church, uh, business, we want to constantly be planting those seeds. And uh, there's a bunch of inexpensive products out there that, that are going to work, and you can always, you know, ask folks like us, do we have some recommendations? Um, you know, what would what would be the kind of products that, that um, would be there? Maybe it's a little uh, keychain, maybe it's a bookmark. Um, there's just always lots of products that are going to plant those seeds. Yeah, and that's right. It doesn't have to be an expensive product, just one that, that catches their attention. And if you do this consistently on orders, you'll see more orders come back out of it. Okay, thing number six is harnessing the power of the media. And believe it or not, there's, um, there's all kinds of opportunities in your local media marketplace to, to get a little bit of attention. Now, one of the things that I first learned about many years ago was what they called human interest stories in the media. So now we're talking about a local newspaper. We're not talking about the New York Times. We're talking about a local uh, community type of newspaper. But they'll run articles on 
you, interesting things, whether it be a business, a club, a person, an event, but, but they'll do that. And they're actually always looking for stories. And I've learned that if you actually write up a story about your business, and let me think, and think about this for a minute, what we do is pretty interesting stuff. I mean, we're kind of used to sitting there behind that press and press it down, open it up, okay. But the reality for somebody else to see the magic of sublimation taking place, that's pretty cool. And, you know, if you're able to have a neat write-up about your business and submit it as a human interest story, and make sure you don't just submit it, but you contact somebody. You know, usually there's a local reporter who's been assigned, you know, a local beat. And you want to get in front of that person. Invite them to your business. Even if it's in your garage, invite them to your business um, and, and show them what you're doing. And while you're doing it, if you can get them to show up, make sure you're making something that would be appropriate for them. Get that newspaper logo, be putting it on a mug or something to give it to them as a freebie so that not only do they get to see how it was done and what you're doing, they walked away with something in their hand that could probably turn into a sale for you as well. And by the way, I've done all the local newspapers in all the counties around me and got their business as well, you know, just by using this type of approach. Yeah, it goes back to the, the story I just uh, told at the beginning of, of looking at the, the TV because that being visual is pretty easy, and that is submit um, those, those morning mugs, <coughs> excuse me, submit um, the apron for the cooking show, look for um, kinds of events that you can plug yourself into. Yep. You know, press releases, it's another approach. Uh, most of these local newspapers, and people still read the paper, um, have a business section. And in that, they'll list local business news. And the way they get that news is typically people sending in press releases. And when you say press release, a lot of people are like, well, you need a press agent. and That's beyond me. Well, no, it's not. The thing is, is it doesn't have to be very complex. The idea is you want to get your name out there. So let's say, for example, that your business um, starts to sell iPhone covers, okay? Well, that's a pretty neat product that has a lot of mass appeal, and that's something you might actually do a quick little press release on. Uh, maybe you move to a new location, or you add more equipment, or a bigger printer, or something. Every time something happens to your business, submit a press release to your local media about that. They may or may not pick it up, okay? That's, that's their choice. But the point being is, every time you do get picked up, your name is out there again, and the more times that people see your name, the more legitimate your business appears to be. Because as long as you're in the news, not in a bad way, <laughs> you know, that's going to be good for you, good promotion for you. Absolutely. And you, you can, for instance, do a little bit of rainmaking and creation out there. For instance, I knew of one local sublimator that just simply sent out to the news saying that, um, they wanted to help people learn a little bit about Photoshop elements because um, with photo gifting being so hot to show people what they could do. And, and they had a little class. They taught people a little basics of Photoshop so that they could submit their images to put them on products. And I thought it was real innovative. I sent a couple of people to the workshop and they came back going, wow, I'm glad I went and, and now I see even more things you can do. So I, I think sometimes there's all sorts of innovative ideas with a twist, like I'm going to teach a little class, going to show you this, um, so that the clients, uh, prospects do get value out of it. You know, I got a friend out in California and uh, who I've met through the, the world of decoration, and what he does is each year he invites the local kindergartens to come on a field trip to his business where he's able to show them, you know, how he creates things, and he and he can give each one of them a little, you know, gift of some type to take home, or or you know, he, he varies how he does that. But the point being is, he invites all the local kindergarten classes to come out on a field trip, and when he does that, and when they accept, he also invites the local media to come in because you know the media loves to take pictures of you know young children especially with our mouth like wide open looking at something. And so what he does is he gets, he's using the kindergartners to attract the media to come take pictures and put them in the paper, you know, of what he's doing. And it's, it's always worked very well for him. Um, you know, the kindergartners aren't going to be buying anything from him, but he's getting enough publicity into the community through it that it's one of his favorite uh, promotional uh, tactics. Well, while you're talking about press releases, 
uh, keep in mind that you're not the only one doing press releases. And, and a good way to learn about what's going on and to prospect for new clients is to respond to other press releases. And I'm the kind of guy that when I sit down in the newspaper in the morning, yeah, I still read newspaper every morning, um, I look for business opportunities or sales opportunities with other businesses, okay? And, you know, if you, for example, if you see something like a manufacturing firm reaches 100,000 safe man hours, you know, a lot of these firms go out and buy commemorative items to give out to their staff because it's a very important occasion. Like DuPont, for example, DuPont's so safety conscious that every time they hit one of these goals, they go out and actually spend a pretty decent amount of money on buying, you know, reward products for the people with that network group. And when you see these things happen, that's that should be a trigger to you that says, "Hey, here's an opportunity." Same with a new business opening in the area. You know, here's another opportunity for, you know, some promotional products, maybe some um, apparel products. You know, there's a you know some signage products, all these different things. And you see this press release that you know. Um, you know, John's uh, automobile repair service is getting ready to open. Well, you know what? He probably has a need for some of what you have, and you should call on him, congratulate him on his new business, and show him some opportunities to help it, you know, expand his reach through your products. You know, there's a lot of good information in the newspaper. In fact, I keep a database when I read anytime I, because having a name to me is more important than anything else, not a business name, a person's name. Because if I read an article, and it might be a, a bona fide article, I mean, somebody had a fire, okay, okay, that's bad, that's tragic, but they didn't burn the business down, they just had a fire, but they interviewed the manager. There's his name in the paper, now I know who the manager of that business is. And I actually keep, uh, just in Microsoft Excel, I created a database where I'll have business name, contact name, you know, and, and I'll categorize the business, because I may not call on them next week, but one of my goals was I like to group like businesses together. For example, if I'm going to go to one car dealer, I want to go to every car dealer for like 50 miles. And so as I'm building up these contacts and everything in the database, you know, I can go the day I want to do car dealers and I can go to the Excel and I can sort it by car dealers and boom, here's all these people and contacts. Then I can start putting together some of these neat products to mail to them as David was describing to you and then follow up with a phone call. So there's a lot of good information out there that you can capitalize on to use for yourself in the sales process. Absolutely, and you want to, as you walk through your, your daily routine, you, you want to pay attention to event-worthy kinds of things or, or just things that are happening around you and, and have something available, if possible, to, to drop off and show them. For instance, I tell the story about my daughter and her birthday party at Pump It Up, and I had a few minutes. I made a dog tag for her for party favor and put the business information on the back. And those people flipped out because it was promoting their business and it was valuable for the party participants. And so you want to be uh, pay attention to what's happening in your community and, and respond accordingly. Okay, thing number seven, network, be involved. And, of course, we don't mean networking your computer to your printers. Um, we're talking about networking with other people, other organizations, being involved. Because I think you'll hear over and over as you interview seasoned business people that word of mouth is probably their best advertising and promotional tool. No matter what else they've done, that word of mouth has gone a long way. And a good part of that comes through networking opportunities. Now, for me, my chamber of commerce is very powerful, and only in the means of networking. I don't mean they're powerful politically. They're just a powerful networking opportunity. I've heard from some people their chambers aren't so good, okay? But, you know, for our membership each year, we got a couple of different things. Number one, we got a list of all the business members, okay? So that's like sales leads. Um, number two, our chamber does monthly networking social events where you have the chance to go in and network with other business members such that they can learn better what you do. Because if you tell people you do sublimation, they don't know what that is. You know? But when you're able to actually talk to people in a casual social environment, you can make some really good connections, really give them a good idea of what you do, and then start building some business opportunities out of it. Now, one of the neatest things we got out of it was my wife and I were co-chairs of a festival put on by our local chamber of commerce. It was a Christmas by the Sea Festival. And as part of being co-chair, 
I went on all the local um, morning news shows with the TV uh, to be interviewed, and they always introduced me first as Jimmy Lamb with you know my business name and co-chairman of the festival. So every time I got interviewed, I was getting plugs in for the business, and you know so those kind of things were fun, a lot of work, but it really got us out in front of people. We never you know we always made sure that they knew that we had a business and what the business name was as well as the event. Sounds, sounds amazing. What was the name of the thing you were chair of, Jimmy, again? Uh, it was a Christmas by the Sea festival. Well, how neat. Yeah. Uh, how well, neat. you know what? When you live at the beach or the beach area, it's dead in the winter. So anything we can do to get more you know, people into the area and, and beef up the revenue is a good thing. So that's why we came up with Christmas by the Sea festival. Neat. Uh, bring more tourists to town. Spend more money. <laughs> But there's other networking opportunities. I mean, and that's that's important is to find ways to get in front of other people. You know, one of these things you can do is team up with other businesses. For example, you do sublimation. You don't do screen printing. You don't do embroidery. That's fine. But you're going to have clients that who are going to ask you for screen printing and embroidery. Okay. So rather than going out and buying those pieces of equipment, you can certainly contract it out to other you know businesses. And you know, the idea is to build a relationship because those businesses probably don't do sublimation, so they can send you sublimation business while you're sending them business of what they can do. And that, this is another powerful way to really promote your business. It doesn't cost you any money. You know, it's a nice thing about it. Look at adjacent businesses, and I don't mean they're in the building next door, but ones who do similar types of things, um, but who don't have your capabilities, and then try to team up and, and create some relationships there. Same thing with looking at some of the big guys. You might, you know, if you have one press and one printer and, you know, you're doing, you know, potentially small, you know, items, uh, you know, on the desktop and somebody comes up and they, they want you to do, you know, an all-over print on a T-shirt. Well, you don't have the capability of doing all-over printing, but that doesn't mean you turn it down. You know what? You want to build relationships with the guys that can do the, maybe the big stuff. Especially the big orders. If somebody comes up to you and they want a thousand coffee mugs, you probably don't want to do them one at a time if you just have one mug press. It's going to take a while. Okay? But there may be other people out there who can do a thousand easily. On the same token, they usually don't want to do the smaller orders. So this is another unique thing of finding people that do similar things to you, but on a different scale and building that relationship. I mean, uh, David, you, you do fulfillment, correct? We do. We do. And, and it's. Um for folks that get into volumes that are above their capability or they have you know a situation where an employee goes on vacation or simply have um, products that they don't have the equipment to fulfill size wise going back just just for a second on your what I thought about on your teaming up with other businesses which I think is is absolutely gold is that that sometimes you can team up with many businesses in a wholesale fulfillment fashion and for instance, um, it could be a pet groomer is one of my favorite examples. And you're, you've got you set up a little display at their their place of business. Show them a pet mat, a dog oh, bowl, yeah. cat bowl, pet leash, things like that. Because um, as Jimmy and I both know, um, you know, the pet business is where where a lot of folks spend an enormous amount of money because they love their pets. And my dad was a veterinarian for 50 plus years. And so dogs and cats are, are absolutely everything to me. So look for those wholesale opportunities because all you got to do is just set the business in motion, so to speak, and they're going to be your, your order takers for us for you. And um, for instance, you could go buy with the, with the iPhone covers, go buy some of these independent um, cell phone dealers and just simply say, hey, could I set up a little little display? Um, you know, at your place there, and it's an iPhone cover, and you set up an email address that they can email you the artwork that's appropriate for their, so it lets you know where it's coming from, and then you you fulfill the covers, drop it off, and and they give you the money, uh, and you give them a cut of it, of course, um, 
and they're getting value for their clients um, because they're always looking for something new and fresh and exciting and this certainly is it so so think about you know especially where you already spend money money with because you already have a connection with that business and and talk to them about what products might be appropriate for for their clients and then look for those those new connections people that you can call on plant those seeds show them what you can do and you can build up a, a very healthy, um, sort of almost automatic wholesale business. Yep. <clears throat> um, networking with other decorators, you know, it's you know your competition. But what I get at with that is um, <clears throat> when you have relationships with other decorators, there may be a time where you're just overloaded, and you know you want to have somebody you can trust maybe to, to do some of your work for you. And sure, it's like a contract out business type of thing. But I found that that almost everybody goes through that feast and famine type of cycle. And having relationships with other people that are maybe your competitors and, and maybe you don't want the guy next door or down the street, I understand. But you start to develop relationships where you can work together even though you may be in competition. And this may still draw you in some additional business. I mean, um, I've done that with several people where they, you know, one, she specialized in the schools, and, and, I, and I didn't ever try to try to take schools away from her. You know, my specialty is marinas and fishing and that kind of stuff, and then she kind of stayed away from that. Now, if a school called me, that's a little different story, but, you know, we were friendly enough that we built relationships where she sent me some work, and there were some things I could do better than her that I would do for her and vice versa. So... You know, again, it just became another way to generate a little bit of extra business. I think uh, that's valuable for another reason, Jimmy, is that in my 101 tips and tricks for sublimation success, one of them is, is have a backup plan. Yes. And that is that if you have a piece of equipment fail, a heat press or whatever, that you know who to call. You already have sort of an agreement with them uh, that they're in a, maybe, as you mentioned, a non-competitive area. Um, that, that they can lend a hand because we all know, you know, rule one is deliver products on time. And so yep. um, that's how we keep our clients and that's how we grow them. So, you know, working with, a, you know, a network of, of other people and, um, you know, doing what, what um, all the, the, the old experts is the mastermind concept of getting together, even if they're, they're your peers or competitors to some extent, and and um, and talking and sharing and growing together, because um, a healthy you know environment, a healthy uh, economy is what's what's really good for everybody. Definitely. Well, connecting through social media, and I think we hear social media so much that sometimes we actually become deaf to it. Uh, the one thing I guess about social media is that there are definitely a lot of cap you know, possibilities here. But it's like a lot of other things, just because you do it doesn't mean that it works. I mean, it depends on how well you do it and how well you understand it, and you've got to give it some time to build. Because some people really and truly prefer connecting through social media rather than the more traditional you know, forms, and other people don't. So it becomes one of the many tools. But interestingly enough, YouTube sometimes gets downplayed, but YouTube flip-flops back and forth with Google as being the top search engine in the world. And a lot of people don't even realize the power of that particular uh, media outlet. Um, as an example, uh, there's a story. It was a screen printing story, but it was so it stuck in my mind so much um, that I, I relay it to anybody and everybody about social media. I actually saw the story on Good Morning America, but I'm going to make this quick and simple. You can Google it and learn more. But there's a screen printing company that sells ready-made shirts, okay? They didn't do personalization. They just they created designs that were unique. They put them online. They sell them. They have one called Three Wolves and a Moon. And um, they were selling, I think, like one to two items per day. And then an Internet posting that got onto YouTube and went viral took their sales from one to two items per day to over 100 per hour. And it was through YouTube that this thing kind of, well, social media started and then it kind of branched into YouTube and went nuts. Now, sorry to say, I can't tell you how to recreate that. But the point being is that wasn't expected by them either. And they, after that, have been really heavily involved with, you know, videos. And a lot of them are just comical videos with the idea of getting themselves in front of multiple people. 
Yeah, the um, what I would say out there, Jimmy, is the is I would recommend that everybody create a a, a fan page on Facebook, um, and that's probably um, a really good start to to growing your presence there. Um, and and um, you know obviously you know if your kids are really networked, uh, they can teach you all about it. I learned something new on my kids. They're Facebook <laughs> experts, which I'm not sure is a good thing, by the way. Yeah. Um, and then YouTube, I think, is an amazing resource. I think it's often a little bit challenging of, of making sure that you're you're doing things that are going to make you money as opposed to just wasting your time. The wife was after me for the last couple of nights to unstop a tub. And um, I made progress, but I wasn't making fast enough progress. She got on YouTube, and she started, started <laughs> telling me, this is how you unstop the tub, tub honey. And uh, fortunately, it was unstopped by we, by the time we reached that. But it is a tremendous resource um, out there. And you know, you got an iPhone. You know, you take videos. You can post it on YouTube, and and you can marry the two together. You're promoting your products on Facebook. You have a little little video there. Um, I mean, how much effort does it really take? For instance, to uh, the wife is after me to um, to get her to start selling the iPhone covers on Facebook um, and and you know if you think about it that's that's a really great soft sell uh, forum for folks and uh, you know the people up there they all are a little bit you know obviously self-conscious of, of their image and what they're doing and their friends and so uh, I think it's a it's a great resource for for just about everybody yeah, it really is. The main thing that uh, I try to let people tell people is, you got to be persistent at it, and you got to be patient with it because you have to build that following. It doesn't come just because just because you have a Facebook site doesn't mean they're going to show up. You got to get them there, and then you got to have them a reason for why they will go there and why they should come back. But that can be a whole discussion in and of itself. Main thing is you have the opportunity, and it doesn't cost you anything. You know that's what I like about it. Okay, thing number eight, sponsorship. Uh oh, this sounds expensive, but it's not necessarily. Um, there's plenty of special events that you can go out and be a sponsor of for a fairly low cost. And the key is, I'm in front of a focus group of individuals, you know, with with some type of of, of product or whatnot. For example, um, I'm one of the sponsors of this fishing team here, and, and you can see my logo down there. Yeah, right. Okay, I'm a minor sponsor. <laughs> So I barely have a logo on there, but um, I produce and donate a certain number of products every year to this individual, and as a result, because he's a professional saltwater king mackerel fisherman, I mean the boat's given to him, the motors are given, everything's given to him. He gets a diesel suburban brand new every year from General Motors to pull the boat that's given to him every year. So I mean, everything he has is donated, and he makes prize money. But he's very visible in that world that I want to be in. Okay, this is a this is a market I pursue heavily, and that's saltwater fishing and boating and whatnot. And he helped me lead me into it because some of the logos, well, you still can't quite see it, but here's the General Motors logo right here. Well, through him, he got me into General Motors and into Stratus and into Johnson and into Furuno, all these different companies that sponsor him. He connecting me with those companies such that I've just started doing business with them as well. So did it cost me a lot of money? Not really. Okay. And I wrote it all off on my income taxes anyway, because it was all donations to him. But did he give me a return? Absolutely. You know, I got back thousands in revenue every year by sponsoring a team. I also sponsored um a dirt track racing team, which is a you know a stock car NASCAR wannabe racing on a budget, you know. But Again, you know, it, it. I used him to kind of get me deeper into the marketplace, and he was so happy that I was donating products to him that he became like a salesman for me. You know, he was saying, "Well, you know, Jimmy Lamb did all these things for me. Here's his business card." So, you know, that kind of sponsorship. Plus, I got to go fishing in tournaments on that boat. See, that was fun too. See, so there was more to it than just that. But um, but yes, we got involved with events, usually events that were in markets that we wanted to reach. For example, we were sponsors for King Macro Fishing Tournaments that may have hundreds of people fishing in them, the kind of people we want to reach, okay, sponsoring a team in that same marketplace. So, you know, we were involved with, with several of those different things um, that way. So I know sponsorship can sound expensive. It, it's not. We did a lot of mobile work. 
and so we have a mobile workshop we can take places. So we're actually going to some of these events with the mobile workshop as part of you know um, being a sponsor and paying a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars to be a sponsor. We're not talking about thousands of dollars necessarily. It's another way to get in with a certain marketplace and be in front of people. And, and uh, you can always uh, donate in kind, where you make some products for for it. Um, for instance, um, if you watch our YouTube videos, I'm big into helping schools, uh, especially in the engineering, since electrical engineer, with robotics. And for many years, we've done done uh, sponsorships with robotics. And I had the other day had a had a I knew him, and, and we were sort of friends. And he called and he says, Dave. I looked at the full bleed shirts you did uh, for breaks, uh, which were just un unbelievable. And he said, I've, I've just got to be doing that. I've got to do that. I says, well, aren't you in the political? He makes political signs. And he says, yeah. And, and I think this is a product that's going to fly for next year's presidential race. And I said, well, um, I can't comment on that because um, it just, you know, I'm not sure I, I understand. but. Uh, please come by and look at it. And so, where where our passion has been, where our 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 interest has been in helping, you know, organizations could be schools, whatever. Um, you know, those kinds of things often, as Jimmy said, are 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 inexpensive, bordering on free, as a matter of fact. Yep. Um, and and if you if you take advantage, and a lot of times these organizations might be looking for someone with a little bit of leadership capability. Um, to assist these with with growing, uh, we have our battleship here in, in Mobile, and you can you can really plug yourself into to getting great connections. But at the same time, you really are assisting. You may have talents that that they sorely need uh, leadership, whatever. I've had lectured at schools on teaching about sublimation technology for many years, and um, and I've had students that are now in college. They've come up to me and said, "Wow, you 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 helped me along the path um, and kept me motivated because I see what you do that's so neat." So again, um, you know, staying, you know, putting all these Jimmy's tips together and, and being plugged into your community um, really plant seeds for the future. Yep. Well, you know, kind of like uh, right along the lines that you were just talking about, and that's my thing number nine: donate decorated products. And you know, the, the first time we ever did this, we donated something to the um, fall festival at my son's elementary school. Of course, he's in college now, so it's been a little while. But the point being, we did it to be a good neighbor. We really weren't looking at a promotional perspective. And when it, it was just one of the door prizes, but when they held that up as you know, in front of an auditorium full of mothers of young children, uh, you know, they announced who gave it. And people absolutely fell in love with the product, and we started getting phone calls of mothers wanting to buy that product. So we were like, wow, we, we didn't really think of that angle. But we realized that by donating to a lot of these organizations, A, we were helping them out. Uh, B, we were getting tax deduction. Uh, but C, we were reaching out. You know, Ducks Unlimited is one that we've donated products to that they will resell during their banquets as a fundraiser. Um, I've done uh, Billfish Foundation, the Atlantic Coast um, Conservation Association for fishing, and, and just various different groups. And what does it really cost me to give them that? Not a whole lot, really. But the return on it is, is phenomenal because, again, I found that Ducks Unlimited, most of the chapters had a lot of business owners who were members, and they're seeing what we've donated, and then that becomes an end to, to actually do business with them. Yeah, and, and I would make this comment, Jimmy, that, that um, I do have some of our clients that call and, and ask Condi, for instance, to do something special for them with a worthy cause. And so absolutely, since we're your partner, um, you know, touch base with your sales rep or myself if there's something going on that possibly, you know, we can assist with. Um, you know, always open to possibilities. Um, we're a you know medium-sized company, and we'll often have inventory that, for whatever reason, um, we've decided we're not going to sell. It may have um, a minor defect, or there may be some issue that, that as I tell people, defies the laws of physics. But at any rate, it's it's inventory that's just sitting around, um, and and you can touch base. For instance, I can't promise anybody anything, 
but for instance, um, um, I have some, some donation uh, water bottles um, that I'm donating to schools, and, and I have quite a few. I can't remember exactly how the inventory got into the donation. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, but at any rate, it's, it's, it's out there. So, um, you know, as, you're, as you come across a worthy cause out there, uh, please touch base with us. Again, no promises, but we often might be able to do something. And some of the stories that people call are, are, are very touching, that they have an opportunity, uh, especially with kids that, you know, may have some sort of illness or whatever. Um, and so there may be something we can do, but there's no doubt about it that if you get involved with charities, whether it be, for instance, a silent auction is probably my favorite way to get involved, especially with, with sports. Everybody will, you know, generally have a silent auction. Get out there and promote it. Um, put your card in there um, to do something for them. Um, and wow, what, what, you know, there's just almost free advertising. Yep. Okay, thing number 10, our last of our list of 10, uh, making your equipment visible. And, you know, a lot has to do with how your business is set up, whether this is going to work for you or not. But, you know, I, I said it before and I'll say it again that, you know, the, U, the UMA, you know, sublimation production is fairly routine, can be even boring for that matter. But for someone who's never seen it, it's pretty cool, okay? And when people can actually see how it's done, it's almost mesmerizing to the point that, Oh, so that's how that's done, and oh, you know what? I want something done that way. So, you know, if you work out of your house, you're totally invisible. And and this isn't really practical to invite people in your bedroom if that's where you're doing it, you know. But there may be some other ways to get your equipment visible. You know, one of them, if you're in a retail establishment, by all means, have an open house. And, and if you guys have never been to the Condi open house, let me tell you, that's an open house, okay? But the reality is, if you're in a retail location, or a commercial location, having open house periodically is a good way to invite organizations, businesses, anybody who you're looking at for a potential customer to come in and see what you do and see how you do it. Okay, And that's a great way to do that. Now, if you don't have a retail location, you might consider some type of an event or a show. Um, you know, Working out of my house, I went to some of the local business shows that were for the public, not for other businesses per se, and had a booth and actually demonstrated what we did and made products so that we, we got in front of people. So being able to do shows and events is a way you can do that. Um, doing mobile, and, and mobile is a whole other subject, but that's not my trailer, unfortunately. Pictures of my trailer w ended up underwater in a hurricane in this area. But this is just somebody else I know it's kind of uh, uh, messy. But the point being is a mobile operation is almost like a separate business. But if you have a mobile operation, you can go out and get you know directly in front of people. Um, you know, just another one there. And, and then, oops, there was one other one, but I don't have it in here. I don't have a slide. But that is you may actually consider doing sort of a joint project with an existing retailer if you're working out of your house. And wh what I mean by that is, let's say there's a sporting goods store where maybe one Saturday afternoon uh, you go and set up there and you know, you're know you sublimating some of the shirts they sell, for example. Or something where you know they're getting extra traffic in and you're getting that extra exposure by kind of working together in their retail location. Or, or you're doing something like David mentioned with the pet store. Maybe you're doing it at the pet store. You know, on Saturday they're running a special where people can come in and actually have stuff made while they wait. They're making some money off of it. You're making money off of it, and you're getting a lot of exposure. So, you know, think creatively about how can I actually get people seeing the process because that starts to stimulate a whole lot of um, thought processes and, and conversations. Well, Jimmy, that's a great idea. I, I've not, I don't think I've told people to, to work with the pet groomer or pet store on a Saturday, but that is an awesome idea. You know, there are, if you've got especially an E3300, the small printers, possibly get you a JP14 heat press, which is, which is quite portable. It doesn't draw a lot of power. You can produce a fair number of items right there on demand. And what I tell everybody is, is look for those, those mobile opportunities. Follow your passions. Maybe you're a car buff and there's a lot of car shows and it's, it's a great thing to make the car plates. Um, so you, you can look for those, those opportunities out there because 
in that kind of environment, um, it's it's spontaneous buying. Um, it's good, and and you can easily run credit cards mobile now. So yep. uh, certainly, all the stars are aligned to make the mobile business um, more easy. But you have to. What I tell everybody, it's very important that you have your workflow down, that you know who's taking the order, who's handling the money, yep. making sure the order is processed correctly. Because if you don't have that workflow, um, it's going to be real obvious that you don't have your act together. And uh, but you know it, it you rehearse it you work with it you, you your first one may not go ideal but if you stay after it I think um, the the um, the mobile market event driven activities um, can be highly profitable. Yep, and you know David that's something I, I've actually done a lot of mobile events. Maybe that's something uh, we can do a webinar on next uh, next spring or something. You know yeah, after the first of the year. Jimmy. So. Um, Okay, so that's uh, thing one through ten plus everything else that we threw in along the way. And uh, the bottom line for everybody to remember is promotions don't have to cost money, okay? I mean, they may cost a little bit. They don't have to cost a lot. You know, there's lots of creative ways to get things out there in front of people for a very low price tag. And, and that's what you want to look for. Some of the things we looked at today may work for you. Some may not. And that's okay. The idea is to give you options and choices, and you know what? A lot of these things you have to experiment. I think David made it really clear the first time you do something, um, it may not go as, as you expect it, but you'll get better. So the idea is if it doesn't go as well as you expected, sit back and analyze and review what you did, what you did right, maybe what you did wrong, and then you know, maybe you try it again from a different angle because it usually takes two or three times with any promotional focus or campaign to really get it right. What I tell people, Jimmy, is that... Um a great, I would say, wake up resource is a book we sell, which is 125 ways to make money with sublimation. The reason I like it is every time I read it, every time I thumb through it, um, I see an idea and and it means more to me. It means something different. Um, and so you've you've there, there's just so much going on in our our communities, um, both both you know the virtual communities of the web, both local. Um, that really can you can plug yourself into to take advantage of, and and generally what everybody says and and we say the same thing else is look at your passions look at look at the areas that you have some expertise in um, that you know something about the 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 people that you can talk to to promote your business um, and show them what you can do um, again the the what makes a product valuable is really three things it's the product itself of course. Um, but more importantly, it's what you put on the product, um, and that's where your area of, of focus, passion, expertise. And then the third is your selling environment, um, and all three of those add together, and that, that's your value. Um, and, and those are areas that we all need to work on, both Condi and, and everybody else is continuing to do those better so that we're delivering a tremendous value to our clients. Yep. Okay, guys, we're going to switch gears here. If you do have some questions, now is a, a great opportunity to Let me ask. Throw also, this yeah, David has. Uh, the, yeah, I forgot about that. David actually has something special, special to offer to you. It's basically a a, um, a tote bag full of stuff that I think would make good door openers. In fact, there's even a door hanger in here. Um, you got some uh, bag uh, insulators for your beverage, some bookmarks, tote bag. Uh, an iPhone cover, all those kinds of things, and um, our, our marketing department put it together. And normally, if you 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 know bought everything, it'd be about thirty dollars, um, and we'll offer it for twenty dollars, um, which is just a, a great value. Um, I'll make sure that that the Condi sales reps get this flyer, so they when you call in, you're not going to shock them because we put this together a few minutes ago. But I think it's a neat package to. Um, to um, give you some ideas and motivate you to make those sales calls, make those samples, and, and open those doors. Yep. Okay. So if you have questions, the way that you communicate with us in the top right-hand corner of your screen should be a red rectangle with a white arrow. Uh, if you click on that, it opens your control panel. The control panel could be open already. And then you have a chat box there, and you can just type in a question. And then it comes over to me. It doesn't appear on the screen. Um, and then uh, we'll take your question and, and uh, answer it for you as well. If you have questions after the presentation, I uh, put up there uh, David's um, 
uh, email my email, and I know David does suggest that you always contact your um, um, what's your, your 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 staff guys, but you have a name for them. Yeah, sales rep. And, sales but, rep. Um, okay. I, I do answer my emails. Okay. Um, as fast as I can, so I love talking to people. Um, certainly, the passion I got from my dad as a veterinarian, he he loved to talk to people. I I do the same. So always happy to speak with you. Your sales rep is is probably more able to get some of the the uh, logistics things like that done. But um, any way we can serve you, we look forward to it. Where, but at any rate, please, please call on us. We look forward to, to working with you and serving you. And thank you for the time you spent. Would love for your feedback. Please let me know how we can, we can um, do better in the future, how we can um, maybe have different webinars. So thank you. Thank you, Jimmy, for doing such an awesome job. Well, thank you, David, for having me out today. I enjoyed it.